Taking off a moccasin point in Lake Vermilion. It's a pretty good sized lake. If the wind is high, you can do what we did, even though the wind is low. Went straight east. There's a small little dock and then an island here. So you'd have the wind to your back. From there, you could hug the shoreline. Go through those rocks, and that far point is basically where we're headed. It is a calm and cool day on August 2nd. Our crew is joining us. Let's motor on. When you get to entry point number one, you're greeted with the sound of a waterfall. You have gentlemen loading their packs. You have the waterfall again. You have underwater structure and a fairly precarious little path that requires you get out and walk. While this looks like it might be shallow, looks can be deceiving. The muck will sink your feet in by about 12 to 18 inches. That's okay. Just enjoy. All right, pack is on. All right, gentlemen, we're at our first entry point and the only entry point, numero uno. Number one. Number one. It's not that long. It's a nice little short portage. It's worth the hassle. All right, Ryan, show me what kind of funny little swim bait you got there. So we got a swimmer. Oh, it looks real, doesn't it? It does, look nice. Does it taste real? Nope. No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> but they're weedless. Yep. They tuck in. Yep. These are Super Lure USA ones, made in the U.S. They look amazing. So we are at, we're at Trout, 42 rod portage after a little weird precarious stream to get into a, uh, the portage itself. You got a message for the people there, Brad? He says, I'm ready to go fishing. All right. I'm ready to catch them. My message for the people is check your compass before you depart from Moccasin Point. If you head east, you will have to turn around. Let's not talk about that any further. Elia, first trip, man. What are you thinking so far? Awesome. Awesome. All right. Very nice. Shane and Adam, been a while since you've been back here. You enjoying the mud? Yeah. Yep. It's it peaceful. Is. It is very nice. Yeah. yeah. An experienced gentleman just told us about Buck and Cummings. Recommended fishing up there. Recommended some sites up there. He was light and mobile. Got a campsite on that island. It's decently ranked. Someone's hanging out there. Problem is you're exposed to the wind. And if it's windy, you have little places to go. But when you're on the island that's across from it, at least you have a nice rocky spot to maybe stop and have a lunch. How's everyone feeling so far? Good. Good. Right. Good. Great. Good. Shoulders are sore. Yes. Old man's shoulders are sore. This whole island's nice. Not camp suitable for camping, and there's no campsite on it. A lot of ants on that one. Yeah. On that one, we haven't seen it. Someone's hanging out there. But it's private, but very exposed. All right, this is the second portage to the right on Little Trout, in the north end. Uh, the river that gets you up here is down to like three inches, so you end up walking most of it. But look at that! You get a sandy beach! How cool is that? And uh, yeah, no motors up here because it's not passable. You literally have to walk your canoe.
we set in in Moccasin Point in Vermilion. We paddled the wrong direction for half an hour, double backed, made it to entry point number one in about an hour and a half. So by 10, we were across the portage in the water on trout. We stopped at two different campsites, uh, had a group push on ahead up the stream to Little Trout. We only got a text message saying that they made it and they had a site. We did not get all the other text messages that followed that said how horrible it was to get here. Uh, otherwise, we probably wouldn't have come. But you know what? God creates perseverance and those who persevere usually succeed. So we're going to fish this and we're going to relax. And we're also going to enjoy sandy beaches. Yeah, the, uh, the gravity filters, put a gallon in each. We have a dedicated container for filling with lake water. We have a five gallon container that we're using that's collapsible to store it. So we'll just basically pump and filter five gallons at a time, keep it handy. It's a very slick system. Our first sunset on Little Trout. This is obviously looking west. This is the second campsite on the right. You can see some people over there at the first campsite. campsite. Both of these have sandy beaches, which is actually a really a nice plus. Let's walk through. There's not a lot of good spots for tents. That's probably the only downside to this campsite. Back over there in blue and orange, Brad and I are working on hanging up food between a couple trees. We have a little open area that maybe at one time was used for food hanging, but there aren't any great trees here. So we got a couple of tents stashed back here. Then back at the main area, we have a couple of hammocks, a couple more tents, all kind of gathered around a common area. That's not all bad. Not all bad at all. Yeah. We are just hanging out, filtering some water. Yes, the gravity filtration is working out very, very well. Uh, it's obviously fire band, so we're just using cook stoves instead. That works out pretty well. The beavers like it here too. On the north end of Little Trout, you have a pretty peaceful, little serene space. Very sandy, shallow bottoms. In fact, we almost thought it was a portage entrance or maybe even another campsite uh, at a distance. But once you get close enough, you realize it's just the beauty of nature. There's a large flat rock that almost looks like a great spot to dock a canoe. But part of what you see is because of the low water level. Um, and that's what's revealed a lot of the sand uh, and sandy beaches. But the whole lake is sand, uh, which makes it very nice to walk in. This little guy was awesome. Just hanging out, grabbing a snack. Um, obviously we had to take these fish out to the middle of the lake, but we cut him off a little piece to take who was home. He was cute. We really enjoyed fishing on Little Trout. The bottom is sandy, just sand everywhere. No mud, no muck, just sand. So. Throughout the lake, there are a couple key areas that we'll show here on this map. You have a very, very shallow bench, like a foot. Of course, water was down quite a bit, but it was very shallow. You have a rock that was exposed, it was covered in bird poop. And then you had another shelf kind of coming off of the point. And what we would do is we would canoe as fast as we could with crankbaits out the back of the canoe and our speed would essentially just troll the lake and we caught big northern and big walleye doing just that and we were pretty consistent um, when we would bring them up to the shelf so we'd get them down to like the 15 16 foot depth 
whatever the crankbait was rated for. And then once we started to hit the shelf and we'd see it on the depth finder, we would stop rowing and let the crankbait just kind of float up to the top of the shelf. Now that island there, we spent a decent amount of time fishing all the way around. Uh, you can get everything from walleye to northern uh, and bass kind of just about anywhere around there. Obviously, as you get closer to the island, you have more opportunities to snag because it does start to get a little rocky uh, about that point. But it was clear and it was fairly calm most days, which made for great fishing. All right, Brad, we'll do a short little video on your setup. Fish for sure. Brad's got his GoPro mount and his mounts for his pole, his depth finder, and his depth finder sonar sensor. Little battery lives down there. So, what do you think? How'd the whole rig work out? How'd everything? Good. Yeah, it worked out really well. Yeah. What would you? tweak if you could unlimited shopping at a store i don't know i think it's pretty slick as is everything worked really well i don't know that would change anything <clears throat> awesome maybe add a couple more pull holders oh maybe yeah clamp on ones yeah seem to work the best so that'd be the only thing i think i would really change yeah excellent northern put up a good fight like as usual Did he put up a good fight as usual? I don't know. I wasn't with him. I caught the small mouth. Oh, okay. You put this on your... Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, once I got back. That's right. Good deal. Got a couple of baits. This canoe. So did we catch them all? Win as is. This canoe. Got this walleye. Two walleye and two smallmouth that will be eaten. We got a solar panel that runs to the depth finder on a lithium ion charge. We got the Crazy Creek seat up front, the pad in the or Crazy Creek in the back, pad up front. Simple little pole holder, much nicer pole holder. That one is a lot nicer. Uh, this one's pretty useless. Kind of works, but not really. Uh, we have to clear up the net, but it is a beautiful day. On the beach in Little Trout. When the audio changes like this, it should be obvious to you that I'm doing a voiceover. Uh, wind and background noise uh, affected some of the recordings, and I appreciate your patience in trying to deal with that. Take a better microphone in future trips. This campsite has actually a very, very shallow water for a long ways. And there are a lot of leeches here. So every time we would get out of the water, we would check our feet and uh, pick off leeches. Uh, other than that, I was just so comfortable to walk in. Everything about this site was, uh, was really nice. We could spend a lot of time here and be comfortable. An hour before sunset, two adventurers drift off into the calm lake. Their hearts are set on fish. Their stomachs are set on whiskey. We're going to watch them. But we're going to watch the sun more. They're loud. Their trick is to scare the fish into thinking anyone that loud isn't any good at fishing. But little do they know, these two gentlemen are well in the average category.
This is about as exciting as it's going to get. So this pretty little point, it's actually a nice view. Nice place to hang out. You can see the other campsite in the distance. I've dubbed this cell phone point because I just made a phone call standing on those rocks. It's pretty. Looks good. If it was uh, any better, you could actually spend more time there, but uh, at least you could set, set up some chairs and maybe lean against the rocks. But what you can see here is uh, two other tent pads. You could probably fit another one in here. Uh, we created a rain fly because we do have the storms coming in. So we wanted to make sure that these two tents could, uh, it's hot enough too that we don't want to keep them closed up or it's just a sauna. So this get, expands our vestibule for keeping our gear dry, gives us some positive drainage. Uh, it works. We could, you know, if we had another tree, we would try and take that one further out. But uh, as it is, I think uh, we'll see how it works out. We'll make any adjustments if need be. But it's a nice, fairly level spot. It, it slopes from where I'm standing away. So you kind of have to have your head towards where we are. And, you know, otherwise you're upside down a little bit. And I just put my pack under my pad in order to get myself a little bit more elevation so we could get drainage. The smoke isn't bad, but there's obviously particulates in the air. The air quality is rated a medium currently. And uh, we can tell that we're a little more sinusy than we would normally be. In the distance, you can see a pack hanging up right about there. Uh, we got another one that's hanging up, got some orange string. Uh, you can't really see it in the video. We use pulleys uh, to ratchet everything up. We'll show you what that looks like a little bit later once we got the packs hanging. But it keeps it off the air, off the ground enough. There's not a lot of great spots to do that. In theory, somebody could probably use this spot here, but your pine trees don't have any like great branches to support anything off of. So this one in particular, everything's broken off of it. You might get lucky and get something around them, but they're all leaning down. So hard to complain. Everything's beautiful. All of the shoreline in Little Trout is just gorgeous. The sandy beaches, the rocky beaches, it's the whole lake. It's just beautiful. This tent pad has proven to be pretty good. It is Wednesday, August 3rd. This would be our this will be our second night here at camp. First night went well. We're preparing for rain. So what we've done is added a second tarp over top our main tarp to keep the camp area nice and dry. Positive drainage is important, so we've got a nice amount of overlap of our tarps. So we won't have any issues there. Uh, canoe went under, so you can see the automatically inflatable vest there, along with some clothes that are drying out. This campsite is fantastic with a nice walk down to the sandy beach. So dinner tonight is fish. fish. And what's the uh, mountain house meal? Chicken fried rice. Chicken fried rice. Yep. And, and tortillas. Bacon and cheese mac. Yeah, bacon and cheese mac. So we get to make dope little tacos. From the fish caught by Adam and Brad duo, bring the two big ones in. Some from Ryan and Brad last night. Yeah. All right, it's Friday. It's been rainy, cold, windy, hot, sunny. We've had all the seasons. Eliar, you learned that uh, the ground sucks and the air is better. Hammock worked out well for you. Very well. Yeah. What are you gonna do next time? Now that you've learned what you've learned over the last four days. Bring the hammock. <laughs> And, I don't know. Mommy's sleeping bag, maybe? Yeah, mommy's sleeping bag and hammock. Mm -hmm. Oatmeal for breakfast, breakfast bars. Mountain house breakfasts are good, but yep. oatmeal suffices. Yeah. What about you, Ryan? 
I like the dehydrated fruit. Um, I'm trying to think of what else that we were short of this year. How about fishing lures? So we used a lot of crankbaits and what the locals used uh, um, leeches. Yeah. That works well. So. Crankbaits and leeches. Have we caught anything on soft plastics? No. Mm -hmm. I didn't catch any. I, well, I used them the first three days. And... I would say the first the first day we were here, that big smallmouth bass I caught was on a swim bait soft plastic. Okay. Yeah, I've thrown quite a few of them, but yeah, yeah it was uh, crankbaits that I've had the most success on. Yeah. Spinner. Yep. Little spinners, too. How about from a gear standpoint, Brad? We're a couple days in, obviously. What would you change for next time? Gear? Yeah. I don't know. I think I would get more of a cook system that is more contained. I think we just got a lot of pots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like a massive, you know, yeah. well, commercial <laughs> kitchen set. <laughs> We've got pots and pans <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, we are sitting uh, pretty we, we could have random and bulky. Half of this. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about trying to minimize so we'd only have like one or two cooking systems. But we have also seen the benefit of, you know, five things going at once. Yeah, We're all trying to make group. stuff. Yeah, it's absolutely. A large group, but it's easier to have two or three people cooking at the same time. Yep. And some of these are super light. You know, the, the big stove is just a luxury because we didn't have the portage much, but... You know, the jet boils, obviously, they don't weigh much anything. You know, you pack a couple extra ones, not, not be too burdened down. How about you, Shane? What would you uh, tweak for next time? Nothing. <laughs> Pretty happy. What about, your, happy. what about your hammock? What would you change about it? What, what things would you have brought to help you keep warm at night? And... Maybe a pad that didn't leak. <laughs> Yep. Other than that, I think it would be fine. Yeah. How about you, Adam? I mean, you got the best chair of the group. I think we, we feel that way. You better show the, the camera that, that chair. So keep them out. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll do a we'll do a link to that chair for sure because it's it's incredible. Yeah, you could almost sleep in that chair. If it had a footstool that flipped out up underneath it, <laughs> that's I probably would never leave it. I, I would say so, yeah. Mm. Mm. Better pair of water yeah. shoes. Water system. Water shoes, yeah. Yeah, keeping your feet dry. I mean, obviously, these open sandals are nice, but they also let all the sticks and mud and twigs in. So we've been struggling a little bit with... They protect your toes on a portage, but they, they suck in the muck. So the neoprene socks that I think Daniel had, that's probably a pretty neat idea. Yeah. Something you can slip on, protect your feet, walk around, nothing gets in them. Keeps your feet watered, kind of dry. Mm -hmm. That might be a neat idea. I think the biggest contributor this year was the collapsible uh, <coughs> water in the... That's right. In the filtration probably was... Yeah, instead of us having to hand pump like we did previous years, yep. having a collapsible five gallon container that then we were able to use with a pair of one gallon gravity filters. It's pretty much insured. We've never been out of water the entire trip. We've still used our minis, I think, you know, when we've been out and about. I haven't had mine out at all. Haven't you? Well, that's perfect. Because we've just had water available all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I kept two life water bottles. One of them that was dirty with tape on it and one of them that was clean. Uh, so then that way we could fill up the clean one here and I could always keep the dirty one in the lake. Yep. Yeah, it's worked out well. Yeah. This campsite's worked out very well. <laughs> this campsite's fantastic, yeah. It's a testament to how good it is that we're considering staying at it. Yeah. Weather has something to do with that too, but it is a pretty nice setup. So we'll see what the next couple days hold. It is Sunday, and 
we are going to head back tomorrow on Monday, August 9th. Uh, it's a little bit early, uh, but we want to give ourselves the opportunity. Plus, the weather outlook is rain Monday night, Tuesday morning, Tuesday night, thunderstorm chances, whereas today and Monday are clear and sunny. So the cool thing about the water being down is that uh, the the pathway or the stream into this lake is basically down to an inch and you have to drag your canoe while walking through just sand and sticks and mud. It has been calm almost every night. We've had protection from south and eastern winds, which is where most of the wind has been coming lately. So you can see that the water is just perfectly still. Uh, just a little bit of wind kicking up from the south, but again, we're protected here, so it works out well. The other benefit of the water being down is the beach. Now there's sand and rock, essentially, throughout most of Little Trout Lake. It looks like this almost in, on the entire perimeter of this lake. It's sandy, it's rocky, and it's a very soft, smooth sand. It feels really great under your toes. This stuff is a little gra more gravelly, but once you get out, it's just super small, soft. And it carries for a ways. So you can probably walk a good 15 feet to 25 feet away from shore uh, at least and still be, you know, knee to thigh height. And you can probably go out a good 30 foot before you're even getting waist high. So you can actually walk out quite a ways, which if you're going to bathe, makes a good opportunity to do that. When the water's up, I imagine this is a less obvious location. In that all you would have is this sandy opening, but you would have a sandy opening. We've noticed that the portages to Gowan, I mean, that's almost completely hidden. You basically have to walk the shoreline until you see something that looks like a tiny trail. The portage to the north end or the north arm of Trout is also equally hidden. Uh, you can almost not even find it. You have to, We had to walk the shoreline for about 25 minutes before we could even find something that basically just looked like a path that jets into the woods. Uh, neither of them are marked. The other campsites um, have a smaller sandy beach, nothing like this. And they're obvious, but their campsites are more visible to the lake. This one, of course, is sucked back from the lake a bit. And you have a little bit of windbreak, a little bit of privacy. So, you know, we have places that we can stash our canoes, but we actually have a nice little secluded walk up to our campsite. In all, after spending more than a week here, uh, it's easy to rank this a five-star site. We had comfortably fit seven people in five tents and a hammock. And there was room for more. The campsite area it has three large logs, flattened, a nice large communal space, and surrounded by trees. So adding tarps was really easy. Uh, finding places to hang food wasn't difficult. The latrine is sucked back in the woods, not too far, but far enough to keep smells away. The latrine is full, but obviously they'll have to just you know move it. Uh, they won't probably won't move it far. That's not a big deal. Tent pad areas are okay, uh, but they're nice enough that you got enough space. But we've been pretty much isolated. We've only seen a few passerbys, only had other campers maybe two nights out of the whole uh, eight days we've been here so far. It's been very peaceful, and fishing's been great. 36-inch uh, northern, a lot of... 18 to 24 walleye, 136 walleye, uh, some massive smallmouth bass. There's areas right out in front of this cove that have walleye in them. There's an underwater island across the lake on the southwest side. Shallows up right now to about a foot deep, but on either side of that are a lot of bass. Uh, and that's where the, the smallmouth bass that we caught, they were just awesome. The large walleye was caught between that island and the shoreline. And 
northern have been kind of caught throughout, but big eater northern. Uh, it's been a lot of fun fishing here. The days are less productive than the evenings. Uh, we haven't spent a lot of mornings fishing. We could, but honestly, we've gotten like 10 hours of sleep every night. It's been really relaxing. It's a cool site. It's a cool location. So this campsite on Little Trout is the second one on the right when you first enter. You have a couple trees that are suitable for hammocks, which we end up doing. You have a generous campsite, plenty of logs that have been pre-flattened, so that way you actually have pretty decent spots to set things. You have a large tent area over there, and then you have another large tent area back over there. The walk to shore is short, but there's a walk to shore. So what that means for you is that you get a windbreak pretty much at all times. So when you are inside the campsite, you are sheltered by enough tree line that even 15, 20 mile an hour winds don't tend to be too disruptive. And of course, you'll see the beach a little bit later. You have a point that is beautiful. We got some videos of that later on. And another area perfect for hammocks, as long as you don't mind wind. Back over to the south is where we hung our packs for food. And then currently your latrine trail is up that way, up the hill. Decently away, we never had any smells. This says, uh, this is Monday, August 9th. Uh, it's our last day. As you can see, we've packed up, we've cleaned up. There's leave no trace is the rule. And other than maybe we rearranged a few rocks here and there. For the most part, everything's really well cleaned up. Uh, the next folks will be greeted by a handmade broom if they would like to use that. I guess that's somewhat of a trace, but at least they can use a broom to sweep out either tents or the camp area if they see fit. So we're going to begin the path back to trout. Uh, it goes through a very small stream that currently is an inch deep. It's a bit of a suck fest trying to drag your canoe. Uh, we're wearing socks to protect our feet because shoes are worthless. They'll just fill with gravel and sticks. Uh, but once we get through that, then we have about a couple hours of paddling to head due south, get through trout, get to the portage for Vermilion, and then we'll paddle across as well. We'll see how long it takes us. It is currently 9.15, 9.23 a.m., and we're about 40 minutes ahead of schedule. Our plan was to be up and ready and leaving by 10. So that's nice. We moved, got up a little early, moved a little faster. We'll see how long it takes us. Two left early. Dan came solo late. The five of us are ready to head back. So we have returned. It is noon. So it took us two and a half hours to get to entry point number one. Uh, this is the short portage not the longer portage that you would take if you hired a boat. Uh, it's kind of hidden in a little cove. It's very pretty. The bog and the small, tiny one inch stream that connects trout to little trout cost us about 25 minutes or so of just simply dragging the boat through almost the entire thing, except for the bog, in which case you just inch yourself along. But we made it. Timing's pretty good, so it's noon now. Uh, take, say, half an hour to portage. Uh, we'll look at the waterfall that's on the Vermilion side of this portage. And then we will paddle across Vermilion. Probably an hour and a half paddle. We should be at the truck by two. And continuing our journey. It's beautiful. We'll miss it. This entire trip has been serene. We've been watching fish in the water. The clarity is about five to seven feet. Dig in it, brother. Yep, Daniel has just finished a single portage with his Duluth pack and his canoe and the garbage in his free hand. This is cook custom, actually. Cook custom? Yep. 
So he's just proven he's more man than all of us. In his extra heavy solo canoe with its modifications. Well done, sir. This is entry point number one. You're greeted by an underwater bridge. Looks like it was a dock at one point. And you're greeted by a waterfall. It's a short portage, it's easy to do. Obviously, Dan makes it look even easier. It is now two o'clock. We left Little Trout, which is the furthest lake attached to Trout Lake. Basically, you got, you got North Arm as well. Uh, we left at 9.30, we got here at two o'clock. Uh, pretty good time, we rode the entire time. We did not take a break, we just had the one portage. The day was beautiful, the wind was very low. We met a five mile an hour wind at the very end at the big part of the lake, but other than that, it was a successful trip.